what's up what's up everybody this is jeff from bkj mac tv and this is the bkj mac podcast experience and this is episode number 32 and 32 comes very just wild right now i'm gonna tell you earlier today i was watching the final committee hearing on the um, January 6th um, onslaught by the by the Trump protesters who basically tried to stop the certification of the presidential election that Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, you know, has had won at the time and is now the president currently. Um, basically, these protesters, these pro Trump protesters were driven by guys like Roger Stone, Donald Trump, Meadows, uh, so many, so many bad actors in the um, Trump circle. Giuliani, who I once respected at one time, but now I have very little respect for him. Excuse me. Let me tell you this: this January sixth. Um, committee hearing basically detailed the mindset of Donald Trump um, before the um, the assault on the Capitol and after the assault on the Capitol. And what the what this committee discovered was that he was a sad man, a sad man who did not want the world to see him in defeat. Let me tell you how sneaky this guy, this former president, the former our former 45th president was. This guy literally, literally um, had fake electors. He, wanted, he had fake electors, basically. He wanted fake electors to cast fake ballots in for the for the for certain states that were in so-called dispute that he felt like were in dispute because of the late returns of the ballots he wanted to throw away their vote those electors out and put in the fake electors so that way the vice president had he been in line would have you know supported the fake electors thus giving trump the presidential election back back in 2020 sneaky sneaky deceitful snithering piece of garbage i will tell you that that's something a dictator would do in a in a country without democracy hey i'm talking about you putin you would do something like that that's totally your card um putin and other disgusting dictators across um other countries that rule with an iron fist over their people um, these are the, some that's something of a dictator's um, play card that he would do. I didn't think Donald Trump would ever think about doing something like that. I thought he respected the institution of America and American democracy, and the fact that he wanted to do something like that and and, and to try to steal the election because he didn't want to admit defeat to the American people was pretty was pretty extremely pathetic. You, especially with the fake electors and having Giuliani and having all these jackholes come out and basically support this fake notion that the election was rigged. I mean, it's it's pretty, pretty pathetic from our 45th president of the United States. It actually made no sense whatsoever. It's actually borderline extreme crazy. Um, I don't understand how this man thinks you know, president, I, I'm a student of history and presidents like Theodore Roosevelt, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln uh, would have condemned his action. Andrew Jackson, the president that he looks up to so much, would have had would have had um, Donald Trump thrown out the White House. Let's be honest. Andrew Jackson would not Andrew Jackson would not have respected Donald Trump's um, slithering ways and trying to keep power. Andrew Jackson was all about preserving the power of the country, the dignity of the office of president. Although Andrew Jackson had his um, faults, major faults, 
one thing he did good was preserve the union and he wanted to do it by any means necessary. He even told um, his vice president who was trying to lead a succession um, movement in the 1830s because of tariffs. Um, he told them that I would come over there and I would hang you by the neck and all your successionist bastards if you ever try to separate this country of America. And I'm looking at Donald Trump and it's what he attempted to do. He attempted to cast disgusting doubt and horrific, um, um, how can I say it? He, he attempted to cast an aspersion, a disgusting cloud, black cloud over our election process. You know, it's bad enough the Russians interfered in 2016 of our presidential election, but the fact that he was going to do this with fake electors, it's just pretty pathetic. It's extremely pathetic. But now he's the only president in our in our country's history that has been impeached twice. That's that's pretty pathetic. That's a, literally a brand new low for an American president. Donald Trump will go down in American history as the worst American president on record. He is he would he's actually going to be as worse, if not horrible, more horrible than Andrew Johnson our 17th president of the United States. And Andrew Johnson has has been given very, very extremely low opinions by historians in American history. And I think they are ready to come at Trump in ways you can't even imagine, especially for the actions that he's engaging in at this very moment. You know, the committee was able to expose Trump for who he really was, for who he really is. And that's a sneaky, conniving slithering piece of garbage but let's be honest he became president by accident because people were fed up with the democratic party and the democrats weren't doing enough for the people so they were fed up and they said uh, let's take a chance on someone that is outside the political spectrum and donald trump became president of the united states because of that so let's be honest we bear responsibility i voted for hillary clinton but other ele- other people who went on that ballot box, they voted for Donald Trump. And because of that, he became president of the United States, the 45th president of the United States. And now with today's hearing in place, right, um, Trump has now been subpoenaed by the January 6th committee. Question is, now what? Here's the article, here's the article on CNN News. Uh, this was written by Zachary B. Wolf of CNN. The House January 6 Committee took the extraordinary and theatrical step of voting to subpoena former President Donald Trump on Thursday. It quoted to his public hearings. The subpoena might not lead to Trump's testimony and handling over the documents, but it will act as a teaser for what's to come. Yeah, we can't wait to see what happens. Does he answer the subpoena? The Kapina, the committee still has a report to publish and could also request that the Justice Department pursue charges against Trump or his former aides for their roles in helping to incite the attack on the Capitol and their efforts to overturn the 2020 election. As the subject of a congressional subpoena, it must be painfully clear to Trump that he is a former president, just another citizen, the kind who can be issued a subpoena and that's coming from the chairman of the of the January 6th committee they are trying to make the case that Trump is Oz said CNN John King interpreting the committee's subpoena of Trump he presents himself as an all powerful but when you look it's actually a little guy behind a curtain trying to pull a machine what's next Trump could decide to comply the committee would then negotiate a time, place, and method that will take time. If he refuses to comply with the subpoena, here's what could happen. Contempt. The full House, which is controlled by Democrats until at least January, could vote to hold him in contempt of Congress, something it's done with several other uncooperative witnesses. Referral. After the contempt of Congress referral, the Justice Department could then prosecute as it did with Trump's former aide Steve Bannon and plans to do with to do with his once economic advisor Peter Navarro. Prosecution. 
if found guilty as Biden as Bannon was. Trump could theoretically face a minimum of 30 days in jail. Bannon would be sentenced for failing to comply with the House subpoena later this month. So Steve Bannon is going to jail for a minimum of 30 days um, because he didn't comply. And Trump could be faking that as well, but he has a lot of lawyers. He has an army of lawyers. So we'll see what happens with that. There's no way Trump does a minute, a single second of jail time because he is very well connected. This sequence of events seems far read, far read, fetched for Trump. None of that is going to happen. The Trump critic and conservative lawyer George Conway predicted during an appearance on CNN Thursday. This is about laying a marker. This is about triggering a response from Trump. Trump responded on social media, calling the committee a bus and a laughing stock and accusing members of dividing the country. Conway did point out the Supreme Court has already made clear where it stands on the Trump status as a full president when it ignored his attempt to block the National Archives from sharing information with the committee. The court notably also declined on Thursday to intervene on Trump's behalf in the Mar-a Lago classified documents inquiry. So basically, Trump handpicked three justices on the Supreme Court, and they all voted unanimously to keep their to keep their distance from Donald Trump. Wow, what a rude awakening for President Donald Trump. He must feel very stupid right now. I'll tell you that much. Let me let's go into this article furthermore. Tracking Trump's ongoing investigation, civil suits, and countersuits. But the Justice Department, rather than go after Trump for ignoring congressional subpoena, if it comes to that, has arguably larger and more important inquiries that involve his treatment of classified documents after he left the White House and his effort to overturn the election as president. Representative Liz Cheney of Wyoming said the January 6th committee feels it has enough information to make referrals to the Department of Justice for prosecutions, stemming from the committee's work, and she noted that more than 30 witnesses have invoked Fifth Amendment protections against self-incrimination with regard to the dealings with former president with the former president. Cheney, who serves as vice chair of the council committee, signaled out people who invoked the Fifth Amendment or refused to testify rather than elaborate on their com- communications with Trump on January 6, 2021, including Roger Stone, Michael, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, who's a disgrace to his country, um, John Eastman, and Jeffrey Clark, and Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. These people, let me tell you, these people are the lackeys of President Trump, a former President Trump, who basically tried to up- destroy our democratic practice. For Christ's sakes, he led a movement. He told the protesters to hang pens. Like, are you serious to kill your own vice president? Like, that makes no sense, man. Trump needs to face the music, but it's going to take a long time for him to face the music because he's too well connected. He is a man that is very aggressive and he doesn't care. He will do whatever it takes to prove that he is right and that you you are the critic or wrong about him. It doesn't matter how deep in the dirt he's in. It doesn't matter. He will pursue it to the very end. And that is President, former President Donald Trump in a in a in a air show. Presidents who gave congressional testimony. While presidents and former presidents have testified before congressional committees, they've always done so voluntarily. Most recently, in 1974, Gerald Ford testified voluntarily as president before a House subcommittee about his decision to pardon former President Richard Nixon. Ford later testified as a former president in 1983 to a Senate subcommittee. That hearing, 39 years ago, was the last time a president took questions from lawmakers in the committee setting according to the Senate Historical Office and Senate Library. Presidents who were subpoenaed. President Thomas Jefferson declined to appear at former Vice President Aaron Burr's trial for treason, even though he was subpoenaed by then-Chief Justice John Marshall. Jefferson did ultimately provide some documents. Burr was eventually acquitted. 
President Bill Clinton sidestepped a subpoena by voluntarily appearing before Whitewater investigators. Nixon's resignation from the presidency made his Watergate subpoena moot. But Trump is no longer president. The case with Trump is very different. For starters, it is a congressional committee, not a court or a prosecutor issuing the subpoena. Also, Trump is no, lo- is no longer president. Back when he was president, the Supreme Court punted in 2020 when it sent a dispute over House subpoenas for Trump's financial records back to lower courts. Justices told lower courts to consider separation of powers even in cases involving the president's private information. The House Oversight Committee recently reached an agreement with Trump to get access to the documents. The Supreme Court did rule New York investors could get access to the financial documents. Trump's company will go on criminal trial this month on charges of violating tax laws. Oh boy. On a, overall, this is going to be crazy. This is this is going to be a crazy show that we're being subpoenaed. Overall, this means the January 6th committee must plan to wrap up all its work by January 3rd, 2023, when the next Congress begins and the January 6th committee may be no more. So basically, they have until January 3rd, 2023 to get everything all together. Days after that, whoever takes over Congress, whoever decides to keep the, the, the January 6th committee um, active, uh, if it's Democrats, they'll keep it active. If it's Republicans, bet most definitely they're gonna shut it down. So they got they have to rush and get this work done, and and let's see what happens. See what happens. Um, if you think Trump is guilty, let me know. Thank you for listening to episode number thirty-two of this podcast, BKJ Mac TV. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for listening. Peace, love, always, one. Peace.